Hey, 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 it's recording. I was like, is it recording? Is it recording? Isn't it recording? It's recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Motivated Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Dean Booty. And today we are, it's Thursday, by the way. It's Thursday, episode 233. Um, we're halfway through the, well, nearly, is it, yeah, it's halfway. Uh, I'm doing sober October. For those of you who know me, I love a bloody drink. Do you know what I love about drinking? And I won't go off a tangent, I promise you. What I love about tr- drinking for me is, I don't get absolutely sloshed or anything like that. I don't, I don't want to feel out of control, but it, for me, it changes my perspective. It changes um, how I think about things. So if I've got a problem, I'll have a beer, have a, a whiskey or something. And all of a sudden I will, I will think of a solution for that problem because it changes your perspective. It changes your mindset. It just changes your, how you frame things and it makes you more freer, I think. And by the way, this isn't an advertisement for drinking, but for me, that's what it does for me. And I really, really, really enjoy it. I, I, I love a good drink. And um, yeah, I feel I, I do this every year just to resettle myself. Obviously, I don't want to be reliant on alcohol, obviously. And every October, this just tells me that, yeah, do you know what? I'm fine. Continue on. <laughs> November, December, off you go. Continue. Have a good time. And yeah, so October, I, I don't drink because I just want to reset myself. So but October and uh yeah, so far, so good. And uh, halfway through, and yeah, smashing it, smashing it so far. And you know what? I, feel, I actually feel better. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> I get up earlier. I've got more energy. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a one goddamn minute. Maybe alcohol isn't that good for me. Anyway, 233 episode today. It's Thursday morning. And we are talking to somebody. When I first heard him, I absolutely despised him. And I, I don't say that lightly. I despised Dan Pena. He was talking about smacking kids and hitting people and hitting his staff and all this. I was like, who is this absolute asshole? What? What? You hit you hit your staff. You embarrass your staff. You get grown men to pee the pants. What? what? I, I, and by the way, still, I, I don't know if I like him. I don't know if I dislike him. I, I honestly don't know anymore. When Dan Pena, when I hear him on the podcast, I'm like, oh, I, I've got, I, I just... He's the one person I just don't know if I like or dislike in the world. And I don't think I like him, but then I start listening to a lot of his stuff. So I don't know. He's, by the way, if you don't know who Dan Pena is, check him out. He's a hundred million dollar man or yeah, hundred million dollar man, he says, or a hundred billion, a hundred million dollar man, I think he's called. He's got a book out called Your First hundred million, I think it's so it's not it's not an audible, so I can't read it. <laughs> I definitely can't read, so there's no point in me even trying. Um, but if I could, I've checked out on Audible and it's not there. If it wasn't audible, I would definitely read it because this guy's got some insights, um, was very, very successful in certain spaces and then exit or exited or made to exit. Now he runs private masterminds and etc. in Scotland. He's an American, but he lives in Scotland in the castle. And the reason he lives in Scotland is because he thought that if World War Three breaks breaks out, then nobody's gonna attack Scotland. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Nobody's going to attack Scotland. So that's where, why he's in a castle in Scotland. And yeah, I was listening to him on London Real podcast. I, I kind of love London Real. I know that it gets a bit a bit of a bad rap every now and again, London Real, because of this freedom platform and all that lot. But I was listening to him and he was on there, the first ever episode he did on the podcast. And the London Real host was exactly like me saying, I don't know if I like him or not. <laughs> and and Actually, as it happens, uh, the London, I forgot his name now, the London real guy, he actually now works with Dan Pena on a one-to-one basis. Um, and yeah, interesting. Anyway, so the, what I want to talk about today is what Dan Pena said, about, said on, on London Real. I was like, oh my God, that is so good, Dan. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to give you credit for it on my podcast. <laughs> right. So you have two podcast. you have two podcasts. No, you don't. You have, <laughs> you're listening to what podcast, by the way, <laughs> you have two bank accounts in life. You have your financial one and your emotional one. So you have your financial bank account and your emotional one. Guess what? Most people focus on the financial one and not the emotional one. I was like, that is so true. So think about your life. We have we all know we have one bank account, the financial one, but you also, and then, so you deposit, you take away, you put deposit, you take away. And guess what? If you take away more than you've got in there, you're in trouble, right? But you also have a fan, uh, you also have an emotional bank account that works exactly the same. You input, you take out, you input, you take out, you in money or you in emotions and you take out emotions and you need to be so aware of this. It is all about healthy mind, healthy body, healthy mind and all that. Like you need to take care of yourself because if you are withdrawing too much, if you are withdrawing more than you're depositing, 
on, on your emotional bank account, that is only going to lead to one way. But the problem is we can't physically see our emotional bank account. We can physically see our financial bank account. We know what's coming in. We know what's going out. Or well, you should do. And you act accordingly. The only problem is you do not do that on your emotional one. You do not focus on your emotional bank account. So what I need you to do, what I need, want you to do, and what is going to be amazing for you is just watch every day what comes out, what gets withdrawn from your emotional bank account. How does it affect you at work? Are you stressed out? Are you upset about something? Is how you, you have a bad time in your relationship and it keeps on withdrawing from you, withdrawing from you. What you need to do is you need to be conscious and mindful and making deposits into your bank account, your emotional bank account. Take a moment, take five, take 10, listen to a book, go for a long walk, go to the gym, play football, five aside, go to the pub, whatever it may be. As long as it's not sober October, you can go to the pub but drink Coke or something or orange juice. But hopefully you get the point that a lot of us, we, yes, we look at the financial bank account, but we don't take into consideration our emotional bank account. So just be aware of what is being taken from you. And then you, it's your job, your responsibility to realize that and to deposit things back in to that emotional bank account. Because at the end of the day, people can't keep taking, taking, taking your wife, your kids, your husband, your brothers, your sisters, your family, your work. They can't keep taking from you before there'll be nothing left. There'll be nothing there. And people can only take from you if you deposit it. So what you've got to, you've got to, got to make sure that you put some deposits into your own emotional bank account. Because if you don't, people are going to continue to withdraw, withdraw and withdraw. And when they do, guess what? There will be nothing left. There'll be a shell of a man. There'll be a shell of a woman. And that's no good for anybody because then people are trying to withdraw, but not getting anything, not getting the right things back. So it's, it's good for them and it's good for you to make sure you look after yourself and you add deposits to your own body, to your own emotional bank account. I absolutely love that from Dan Pena. Dan Pena. And I thought it was fantastic. So Dan, take a bow, son. Still don't know if I like you or not. Do you know what? I'd be scared to live in shit of this guy. He's just... He's scary. He's aggressive. He's scary. Anyway, I've got to go because I've got to take my kids to school this morning. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I, my friends, will speak to you tomorrow when I'm going to ask you two questions tomorrow. Two questions. Oh, yeah. Thoughtful Friday. All right. Take a bow. Have a wonderful day. I don't know why I take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.